uh, the 12.4 uh, open data exploration, a basic but ultimately incomplete, but certainly one of the early things one might do is to look at the state means. And you'll see that the means are not all the same. To chart to use with that would be this. This is a good start. This would be what I'd be looking for as a minimum level start on it. Uh, that, that you have at least summarized the data in some meaningful way and you've sorted out that there is indeed a difference between the four states uh, in their average percentage. It summarizes the data. Just making a chart of all these numbers creates a giant mess. It doesn't help people understand the bigger picture. One of your jobs is to help people understand the bigger picture. The, the difficulty with this particular approach is that we haven't shown whether or not this difference is statistically significant given the data we're working with uh, against our own data set and the variation we see inside the data set. Bear in mind, there's a good bit of variation here. This isn't a chart I expected anybody to make. But this shows you all the data points for each state. And you can see that Chuk and Koshrai especially have a wide spread in their data. Pompey's got a pretty good spread, and Yap doesn't have a lot of spread. And certainly Chuk and Koshrai appear like they might even have outliers. So um, the spread in the data may mean, with Chuk and Koshrai having large spreads, maybe this is just a random difference between 49 and 30. Maybe that can be accounted for by random variation. I mean, if that's hard for you to understand, a number of you had noted that the highest value you see is the 83 for Koshrai, the dot that's way up here. That's the uh, highest value. There's the 83.5 value. Um, but the overall average chuk is actually higher. But is it random or not? That's a real key question. And statistics can go at that a number of different ways. Probably, in my mind, the easiest way is to look at these confidence intervals. And here, what I've done is, that's just the mean, that's the average for the Chuk data. This is the average minus the T critical for the Chuk data times the standard error for the Chuk data, the standard deviation divided by the square root. This is the upper bound, straight chapter 9 stuff. And from this, you can see that Koshrai's population mean cannot be higher than 38. Chuk's population mean will not be lower than 41. Therefore, uh, there's no way that Koshrai's population mean can be as high as Chuk. And you can do this analysis for the other states to come up with your conclusion. So you, to make it visual, I made a candlestick chart. That's why the mean is repeated. The candlestick chart requires four rows. And so here's your candlestick chart that I've got. And you can see that for up here for Chuk, there's no way that Chuk's population mean, which is, can't go below 41, could be any of the other population means. Now, it's more complicated for Koshrai and Pompey. You see, Koshrai could have a population mean as low as 21. And Koshrai could have a population mean as high as 30. 30 is more than 21. That's that overlap you see here. In other words, it's quite possible for a Koshrai to actually have the population mean that's equal to Pompey's sample mean and vice versa. They overlap each other. This one goes up to 30.44. And this is 30.36. So 44 goes over 36, so it's included. So that's that means that there's no statistically significant difference here. But the app is, uh, does appear to be potentially 4, 17, 28 at the top. This one drops down to 16. So there's a tiny bit of overlap that we'd have to sort out. But the population mean of Pompey could not get down to the sample mean of Yap. So these two are not separated, Koshrai and Pompey, but Yap is unusually low, Chuk is unusually high. That's your Chapter 9 approach. You could take a Chapter 10 approach to a solution. That works too. You treat all the data. Here you can see I've gone from C2 to F21. That's the full set of data that's up here that you see there. Everything is included. Treat that as your population mean. Each state has, a, has its own mean for the same ones you saw above. And then, since you now have a state mean and a population mean, you do your t-critical for each of the different states right there. And then your t-statistic. 
Uh, your t-statistic is the average uh, for your state, that's the average for Chuuk, minus your population mean, which is right there, the 29 overall, divided by the standard error for uh, Chuuk state. That's formula right out of chapter 10.2 uh, in the book. And anytime t-statistic is bigger than t-critical, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. That's an unusual value, unusual and high. Usually we take the absolute value of the t-statistic, but I left these raw, so you can see that these are low and these are high, but this is not larger than t-critical, not surprising, failed to reject, not larger in absolute value, take the absolute value, 1.75, not larger than 209, and 9.9, .9, absolute value is bigger than 2. But it is, is actually, it's below negative 209. T-critical, is a, it's two-tailed. The, the T-distribution has a left and right tail. It's a modified form of normal distribution. So this is unusually low, unusually high. And so uh, over here, this one is uh, incorrect uh, because it didn't take the absolute value. It should be reject. It should be reject. And indeed it is. It's reject. It's unusual. And so... These two are not just randomly higher and lower. Chuk is not randomly high, Yap is not randomly low. It's significant. P-values, you can get those from the T-distribution, Chapter 10.3, if you want. You go to there. Uh, we don't usually go to an effect size in this particular case because there's some complications with calculating the pooled standard deviation. Uh, but uh, we've got surprising, not surprising, not surprising, surprising, different, not different, different, unusually high. That's a Chapter 10 approach. You could take a Chapter 11 approach, but it's complicated. In Chapter 11, we can only do two samples at a time. So you wind up doing Chuk versus Koshrai, Chuk versus Pompey, Chuk versus Yap, Koshrai versus Pompey, Koshrai versus Yap, and Pompey versus Yap. These are each your tests using the original data. We're talking about a two-tail, independent samples, not equal standard standard deviations are not equal you can check that but that's true and so uh, you can run this test there's a complication though it that we haven't talked about whenever you run more than one test at a time you're running within remember your t critical that five percent you're going to be wrong one in 20 times you are going to be wrong one in 20 times so if you do 20 of these, you're going to be wrong. It, there's a pretty high probability you'll be wrong in one of the tests. So you adjust your alpha, one of, the, one of the solutions. There's some other ways to tackle it, but the simplest way is adjust your alpha. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six tests I ran. So I cut my alpha right there. I've cut my alpha by six, and that's my new alpha. I now need to get under 0 0.00833 for it to be significant, 0 0.00833. And only two of these values made it. Chuk versus Yap, significant. And here we see Koshrai versus Yap, significant. So versus Yap, Chuk and Koshrai are unusually high. None of the others are significant in a Chapter 11 test um, with the correction. Without the correction, you do get significance here uh, and here also. Chuk versus Pompey and Pompey versus Siap. You do get significance. You don't between Chuk and Koshrai, however. That's above our 0 0.05. And you don't, Koshrai versus Pompey, no, above 0 0.05. But in the world of statistics, once you do multiple t-tests, you've got to make a correction for the fact that you just did multiple t-tests. Um, in theory, that same correction probably should be made up here with these t, these t inverses should probably be, since there's four, technically we should be correcting them and dividing them by four as well. And that would be our new t critical. But the uh, results wouldn't change for chapter 10 because of that. And you don't know about that, so we haven't talked about it. Um, but it, so I would have accepted that, you know, this is significant if Pompey is significantly different versus Chuk if you took a Chapter 11 approach. You certainly didn't have to take all three approaches, but nine 
I was looking for you to take either a 9, 10, or 11 approach so that we can actually prove what we're saying. When we say the differences, yes, we've just proven there, that there not only are there differences, but these are statistically significant differences. And we just reported on them. They're significant. Truk is, uh, by Chapter 9 and Chapter 10, and Chapter 11 tests, quite frankly, significantly high. Uh, YAP is significantly low. And yes, women seem to have less control over their bodies and experience more sexual violence in some states than in others. So, uh, now for charts, uh, this is a good chart. Even with the chapter 9, 10, 11, most people can't do a uh, candlestick chart like this. So this is a fine chart to use, average percentage by state. That would be a really good choice. I think there's a fourth way. I don't didn't see many people try it. You could get really fancy with that box plot R tool, and you can do confidence intervals for the medians. That's these notches. And where the notches don't overlap, you have a significant difference. So Truk is unusually high. Yap's not unusually low because the notches overlap, and Pompe and Koshrai aren't separated out either. But Yap does separate out from Koshrai. That's a bit more subtle. I certainly didn't expect anybody to do that. But the box plot does show you well, this chart up here started to show you. Kosha has a high outlier. Yep, uh, Chuk has two low outliers in it. But this is pretty pretty much beyond the level of the course takes you to, to use box plot R this way. But it would be potentially another approach. Also, I'm displaying these gray boxes in the middle are the 95% confidence intervals for the means, which are marked by the pluses, believe it or not. That's a more advanced use to box plot. Travels beyond the intent of the course, but uh, those capabilities are there. So basic approach to this. Basic but incomplete because you haven't proven that the differences. Take this into a conference. A statistician will stand up and say, yeah, but did you prove that those differences are significant? And it turns out that between Koshra and Pompeii, it's not significant. You cannot say that Koshra has a higher average in Pompeii. That's what we just found out. They overlap too much. They they are not separated. They are not significantly different. They statistically behave in an equivalent manner. So you can't say Pompey is worse off than Koshrai. Uh, sorry, the Koshrai is worse off, my bad. Koshrai is worse off than Pompey. They're the same. Statistically, it's a wash. It's a tie, statistically. It's a random difference. But you do get to say Chuk is has unusually higher percentages. Yap has unusually lower percentages. So some different approaches to tackling this data. A couple other notes. But ultimately, uh, any violence against women is damaging to the culture for the women are the, the future. They produce our future generations. They're the children that carry the culture forward carry our language forward to the children. It's mothers who teach children language, uh, mothers who teach children uh, in the very beginning. They're the first teachers of their baby. Uh, no woman should be experiencing any of these factors of violence against them. And as I've said before, um, the, the, the men have to, men have to take charge of their own lives in the sense that men are the ones uh, causing the problem, so men are the solution. The men have to take up their role to ensure that within their family all women are safe, kept safe, and make it clear that no woman, no mother, no sister, uh, no wife in their family, no daughter is, is abused and in any way, shape, or form. Uh, the, the men have a lead role, and that's the Australian white ribbon effort too. Men are the ones who, you know, you don't fix a problem without dealing with the ones causing it. These problems are caused by partners, husbands. They have to be the ones to fix it. Uh, they have to be the ones to decide that they are not going to behave this way. And uh, that's all I have to, to say about that.